Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video we will talk about contrast-induced nephropathy. Contrast-induced nephropathy, also known as contrast-induced acute kidney injury, is a condition characterized by a sudden decline in kidney function following the administration of contrast agents used in various medical imaging procedures. Contrast-induced nephropathy is defined as an increase of serum creatinine by at least 0.3 mg per deciliter or 26.5 micromole per liter or to at least a 1.5 fold of the reference value within 48 to 72 hours after administration of intravascular contrast agents. Contrast agents, such as iodine-based dyes, are commonly used to enhance the visibility of blood vessels, organs or tissues during procedures like computer tomography scans, angiography or cardiac catheterization. In intra-arterial contrast administration, a distinction is made between the renal first pass effect and the renal second pass effect. In the renal first pass effect, the contrast agent reaches the renal arteries in an undiluted form. This is the case when the injection is given directly into the left heart, thoracic or suprarenal aorta, or the renal arteries. In the renal second pass effect, the contrast agent reaches the renal arteries after dilution in the pulmonary or peripheral circulation. This is the case if the injection is given via the right heart, pulmonary artery, carotid arteries, subclavian arteries, coronary arteries, visceral arteries, or infrarenal arteries. How does contrast-induced nephropathy develop? The exact mechanism behind contrast-induced nephropathy is not fully understood but it is believed to involve a combination of direct toxic effects on the kidney cells and changes in renal blood flow. There are several possible explanations for the pathophysiology of contrast-induced nephropathy. It is thought that contrast agents, particularly high osmolar or ionic agents, can cause vasoconstriction of the renal blood vessels. This vasoconstriction reduces blood flow to the kidneys and impairs oxygen and nutrient delivery to the renal tissues. The reduced blood flow can lead to ischemia, so lack of blood supply, and cellular injury. Contrast agents can have direct toxic effects on renal tubular cells. These agents may induce cellular injury, oxidative stress, and inflammation within the renal tubules. The damaged tubular cells can impair the reabsorption and excretion of water, electrolytes and waste products and disrupt the normal kidney function. Contrast agents can promote a generation of reactive oxygen species, which are highly reactive molecules that can cause oxidative stress and damage cellular structures within the kidneys. The administration of contrast agents can trigger an inflammatory response within the kidneys. Inflammatory mediators and immune cells are activated, leading to the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines and the recruitment of inflammatory cells. This inflammatory cascade can further damage renal tissues and impair kidney function. What are risk factors for contrast-induced nephropathy? Several risk factors have been identified for the development of contrast-induced nephropathy. These factors increase an individual's susceptibility to kidney injury following the administration of contrast agents during medical imaging procedures. Patients with pre-existing chronic kidney disease are at a higher risk of developing contrast-induced nephropathy. The impaired kidney function makes it more difficult for the kidneys to handle the contrast agents effectively. Also, diabetes, particularly when accompanied by diabetic nephropathy, 
is a significant risk factor for contrast-induced nephropathy. The combination of high blood sugar levels and kidney damage increases the vulnerability of the kidneys to contrast agents. Advanced age is associated with an increased risk of contrast-induced in nephropathy. Older individuals may have reduced kidney function and are more likely to have other comorbidities that can contribute to contrast-induced nephropathy. Dehydration reduces blood flow to the kidneys and can exacerbate the toxic effects of contrast agents. Individuals who are dehydrated before the contrast-enhanced procedure have a higher risk of developing contrast-induced nephropathy. Also, high blood pressure can lead to decreased kidney perfusion and impair the kidney's ability to handle the contrast agents. The type and dose of contrast agents used can affect the risk of contrast-induced nephropathy. High or smaller contrast agents have been associated with a higher risk compared to low or smaller or iso or smaller agents. What are symptoms of contrast-induced nephropathy? The symptoms of contrast-induced nephropathy can vary depending on the severity of kidney injury and the individual patient. In some cases, contrast-induced nephropathy may be asymptomatic, especially in its early stages. However, when symptoms do occur, they may include a decreased urine output. One of the hallmark signs of contrast-induced nephropathy is a decrease in urine production. This may manifest as reduced frequency of urination or a significant decrease in the volume of urine passed. Contrast-induced nephropathy can cause fluid to accumulate in the body, leading to swelling of the legs, ankles or other areas of the body. This is known as edema. Kidney dysfunction can result in the build-up of waste products and toxins in the bloodstream, which can lead to fatigue, weakness and a general feeling of being unwell. Some patients with contrast-induced nephropathy may experience nausea, vomiting or a loss of appetite. Severe cases of contrast-induced nephropathy can result in fluid overload and congestion in the lungs leading to difficulty breathing or shortness of breath. How can we treat contrast-induced nephropathy? If contrast-induced ne nephropathy occurs, treatment mainly focuses on supportive care and managing complications. This may involve measures to maintain fluid and electrolyte balance, optimizing blood pressure and addressing any underlying causes or complications. Adequate hydration is crucial to maintain kidney function and to flush out the contrast agent. Intravenous fluids may be administered to ensure sufficient fluid volume and urine output. Imbalances in electrolytes, such as potassium and sodium, may occur in contrast-induced nephropathy. Monitoring and correcting these imbalances are important for optimal kidney function and overall well-being. Maintaining blood pressure within an appropriate range is essential for kidney perfusion. Medications may be prescribed to control blood pressure and ensure adequate renal blood flow. If possible, medications that may further compromise kidney function, such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and certain diuretics, should be temporarily discontinued or adjusted. In severe cases of contrast-induced nephropathy, where there is a significant decline in kidney function or fluid overload that cannot be managed conservatively, renal replacement therapy, such as dialysis, may be necessary to support kidney function and to remove waste products from the blood. How can we prevent contrast-induced nephropathy? Preventive measures are crucial in patients at risk of contrast-induced nephropathy. Ensuring adequate hydration before and after the procedure can help to flush out the contrast agent and minimize its concentration in the kidneys. Using low or smaller or iso or smaller contrast agents 
may be less nephrotoxic compared to high or smaller agents. Administering the smallest possible dose of contrast agents necessary for accurate imaging. Medications that directly or indirectly affect the kidney function increase the risk of developing contrast-induced nephropathy. Nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, such as ibuprofen, naproxen or diclofenac, can affect kidney function by causing renal vasoconstriction and reducing blood flow to the kidneys. These drugs are commonly used for pain relief and may need to be temporarily stopped or adjusted before contrast-enhanced procedures. ACE inhibitors and angiotensin II receptor blockers, which are medications used to treat high blood pressure and certain heart conditions, can cause dilation of blood vessels in the kidneys, which may reduce renal blood flow. The use of ACE inhibitors or ARBs prior to contrast-enhanced procedures has been associated with an increased risk of contrast-induced nephropathy. Diuretics, such as furosemide and hydrochlorothiazide, are commonly prescribed to increase urine output and manage conditions like high blood pressure and heart failure. These medications can sometimes cause dehydration or affect renal blood flow, potentially increasing the risk of contrast-induced nephropathy. Metformin is an oral medication commonly used to manage type 2 diabetes. While it does not directly increase the risk of contrast-induced nephropathy, there is a concern that contrast agents may interact with metformin and potentially lead to a rare condition called lactic acidosis. Therefore, metformin is often temporarily stopped around the time of contrast-enhanced procedures. Also important is the close monitoring of the kidney function before and after the procedure particularly in high-risk patients. That's it for this video. I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you again in the next video.